Hi, Sam from Guitar Village here, and today I have the honour of being joined by the man himself, Paul Reed Smith. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm good. I'm here. I like being here. And this, this is my your... first trip back to the UK in almost three years. Wow. So, so pandemic's been and gone, near enough gone. I hope. Touch wood. They're saying it's gone. I'm not sure it's completely <laughs> gone. We're still losing about 400 people a day in the United States, but down from thousands and thousands. So it, it's better. But I think. Life's got to go on, and and you know I, I decided to get on an airplane and come and visit everybody, and here I am. Yeah, oh, and it's it's an absolute uh, pleasure having you here. So what we're going to do is just talk about some of the models we have in, just to understand a little bit more about them. So this is uh, the Custom Twenty Four. This is a ten top model, and this is in a custom color. Can you tell us about the the custom color? Just the the way we decided to to go for that. When I was a kid. We had a thing in America called the Sears catalog. Yeah. And that you could buy a guitar for a hundred bucks. It was wow. a green guitar with a black burst called a Tisco Del Rey. Yes. And it convinced me that making guitars was possible because for a hundred bucks, they had to fret it. They had to make the neck. They had to put a truss rod in it. They had to put tuning <laughs> pegs on it. They had to make pickups. They had to put a bridge on it. They had to spray a sunburst. They had all this stuff. And I just thought, why don't you just do each part better? I mean, it it, <laughs> as a kid, it just seemed, made sense to me. So really, that's the color. It's that beautiful um, faded green with a burst on it. So it's, see how it's darker here than it is here? Yeah, that, that really jumps out. And that's not done with a spray gun. That's done by hand. Wow. So it's stained. It's stained, more, stained more and more as it goes this way. Wow, yeah, it's, it looks incredible. I mean, it makes the, the flame yeah. maple really pop out on this one as well. well. You know what's interesting? You handed me that guitar, and it was playing through our new pedals, and it just sounded beautiful. I was happy with the guitar. Yeah. This thing's going to go away. It's a good sounding guitar. Magic Absolutely. guitars have a way of disappearing. Have you ever noticed <laughs> yes. that they find their own home? You open the case, and somebody goes, I'll have that. Yeah. I'll have me one of that. You, you wouldn't believe the amount of times I've been in the shop and I've just been, we do routine maintenance, so we check the guitars, make sure the strings are fresh, they're clean, and so on. And you restring the guitar and you play it, and you think, this is great. How has no one bought this? And then literally, you wouldn't believe, the next day, and somebody comes, somebody in, comes in and buys it. It's like, it's magic. So the Custom 24, it's been through a lot of changes over mm -hmm. the years. Sure has. The thing that interests me the most, actually, is the pickup. So these are now uh, TCI tuned? Yeah, so TCI means that we are literally tuning them by changing the capacitance and inductance of the coils. So if you listen to a Strat, there's a high note in every note you play. The pickups are literally whistling at that note. No matter what note you play, you hear that note. All pickups do that. They have a, they're like a whistle, they're like a parametric equalizer that are whistling at a note and we're adjusting that note. We're not just adjusting what note it's at, we're also adjusting how loud the note is. Okay, that, that's... And okay. so, you know, for me, um, these are really clear pickups meant for a pedal board. That's what those pickups in a Custom 24 are made for. Made for them. And I, you know, it, they seem to work. Um, it sounded, it sounds great through our house call now. Yeah. The, um, and, and with the Custom 24, I mean, you've, like I said, it's been through a lot of changes, you know, since, since its inception, I guess. You've got, you know, uh, we're phase three locking tuners mm -hmm. now with the phase uh, three tremolo system. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to go for the gold in there as well? Because if you put all gold hardware on the guitar, that's one thing. Then it's a gold hardware guitar. But to have it mixed between the gold and the nickel seems to, you know, we call it hybrid hardware, it seems to give it a, a bit of class without being too opulent. You know? Yes. Um, and it's always worked for us. So, you know, when something works, just leave it alone. Yeah, absolutely. I think it looks it looks incredible on the guitar as well. You know, from the I mean, I guess we bridge. could have a gold fret and then a silver fret and a gold fret. That would wow. Well, no, nah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it would it would certainly be confusing for the first kind of couple of weeks of owning the guitar, trying to get used to it. <laughs> it might, might it catch was on a, though. It was a joke. Uh, look, <laughs> I was in Japan three days ago, and now I'm here, and so, you know, people don't give much credit to jet lag, but it it'll wipe you out. Yes, I can imagine. So you, you, yeah, from from standard time in, in America, you're five hours behind us. Where's Japan on the, the thirteen hours in front of us? Wow, in so you, America. 
So you 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 have no idea what time of day is in your head at the moment. I know that I'm sitting here in a in a brand new photo studio in your place in in England. That I'm <laughs> That's aware it. of. That I'm aware of. It's all right. You've got Jez with you as well to to take yeah. care of you. So well, you he'll make sure you're been, in the right place. You guys have been a wonderful shop. Uh, this place, people like buying guitar shirts. They don't really want to walk out without one. Some places, that, that's you, the, you, you walk into a store and, and you you don't want the salesperson to sell you a guitar. Oh, you wow. walk in here and you feel bad if you didn't walk out with something. I walked <laughs> in and I wanted to buy something. Yeah, but, I, That's how I feel every day, I think, yeah. coming here. Let's have a look at a couple of the other guitars then, because here's, I've got... Here's another think, custom. Yes, this... I wanted to ask you about the colors. This is a uh, faded well blue, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like blue jeans. It's uh, Is that the most popular color on the Custom 24, would you say? It's almost the most iconic in my mind. I don't know that, but there's a lot of them in the factory and it goes really well for us and people seem to enjoy, uh, enjoy it. I like it because it, it's just, um, you wouldn't be so scared to ding it. <laughs> I mean, everybody's like, don't touch my guitar, right? And I'm like, take it to the gig. Let the bass player back into you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, if you don't play, if you don't play it and let it do its job. Somebody asked me today, why don't you relic guitars? And I said, I don't want to put war wounds in babies. You can put the, your own war wounds in it. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it's why vintage guitars are so popular because, you know, and it surprised you, you get a brand new guitar. And people don't want to get that first dent in there. Yeah, well... But you get an old guitar that's got loads of dents and people absolutely love them. Yeah, but maybe that old guitar was made by people who knew how to make guitars and that has something to do with it too. Yeah, which, which you know, makes me uh, think about, you know, you, you starting out, you know, as a, uh, as a young builder. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I have got a guitar that I brought in as a bit of a surprise. So here we have, this is a late 70s Gibson Les Paul Standard. I need to take a look at it. Tell me, this guitar would have been around just as you were kind of pottering around playing guitar and, and building your own. Mm -hmm. So tell me what, you know, when you look at this guitar, what made you think, I'm going to build my own guitar? This isn't the guitar that made me think that. Which guitar was it? These are guitars where I was repairing in a repair shop. Um, I had a 53 Les Paul with a trapeze tailpiece uh, um, that I thought was the beginning of understanding real neck shape. I had um, a lot, I was the repairman for most of the old Telecasters in my area. It's a lot of the old Strats. And you'd hold those guitars and they teach you, they teach you about neck shape and they teach you about tone and they teach you about um, what players look for in an instrument. And they would teach you something magic coming out of the amplifier. And it was fascinating actually. So for, for me, this was a guitar that I repaired in the old shop, um, they had trouble at this period with the necks used to be warped up high. There were there were some, that has a maple neck on it. Yes. Right before that, they were three piece mahogany necks. That's a three piece maple neck. And then after that, they were multi layer bodies. Um, of this ilk, some of the Les Paul customs were wonderful. Really? Uh, yeah. So. Um, the, the, this guitar is a lesson in what to do and what not to do, both. Oh, well. I mean, I always, I always thought that these things, these pointers, were thumb slicers. If you went fast, <laughs> it would just slice your... And that's what I named. I called them th thumb slicers. That's why we don't put them on our guitars. Absolutely. But this always yeah. worked well. You know. Simple. You're right there. Yeah, Hit the works. thing. Yeah. You know, first chorus sections, mm -hmm. you got a big distinction mm -hmm. between it. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, thanks for that. Let's, let's check out a couple more of, of your guitars anyway. I do have a, a lot of questions actually regarding your electrics. Why do they sound so good? You know, what, what do you do inside the guitar with the electrics to, to really make these jump out? No matter what mic you put on Barbara Streisand, she's not going to sound like Paul Rogers. So it's not all Absolutely. the pickups. Not all the pickups. Although the pickups are a big deal. If the guitar is making a vowel sound of an E, it's hard to get that sound out with the pickups. To my ear, the best sound is an ah note. Ah, 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 ah. Ooh, is a little low. Or, oh, it's, it's, you know, a little dark, right? And so we're trying to get an ah note out of the guitar. 
and a really good guitar, the low strings have a lot of high end and the high strings are big and thick. A bad guitar, the low strings are really thick and the high strings sound like dolphins. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, which I don't like. So when you're talking about that, it's a combination of working on the acoustic tone and working on the electric tone. And you want the pickups to have an on note and you want the guitar to have a hot note. Look, you can find out how good a guitar is with a stopwatch. A guitar that rings for 12 seconds is not as good as a guitar that rings for 40 seconds. Period. End of story. Because one of them's deadening strings and the other one's not. So you, you have uh, in a safe hidden away the rules of tone. And I presume this, this, uh, this is about what you do to the guitar. I, I watch, I, I watch a lot of YouTube as well. You've done did a few I say videos. I it was in a safe? I you did. did. You did in one of the videos, yes. Uh, you can, uh, it was a... need to be taken out and spanked. All right. We'll get the location for everyone. Don't worry. No. Oh, it's in my office. It's That's a, easy. It's a gun cabinet. It's a gun safe. cabinet, yeah. yeah. But, but I, I mean, you can't tell us what's on there, I understand. But it's interesting. But does that refer more to the design yeah. um, in terms of the building, the manufacturing of guitars? It's complicated. So... If you make the guitar and everything on the guitar is dead right, except for the third fret's in the wrong place, you've got a problem. Yeah. If you make the guitar dead right, but the volume control jumps on, it goes beep, beep, you got a problem. If you, if, if you make the guitar and it sounds and plays great, but you just don't like the way it looks at all, you got yourself a problem. If you love the way that it sounds and looks and you don't like the way it feels, you got yourself a problem. So. You know, guitars are almost like um, the opposite of grocery stores. If you're in a grocery store and they don't have cantaloupes, you still have a grocery store. But if you don't have the cantaloupe with the guitar, you're dead. It's a series event. You need all the stuff. So maybe that wasn't the best analogy, but I think you understand where I'm going. Yes. You need everything to be right. So one of the rules of tone would be that the frets have to be calculated to be exactly in the right place and you've got to move the nut to the right place so that it stay, it plays in tune. Look, a guitar that doesn't stay in tune or play in tune, you get yourself a problem. Yeah. So you, you want to put a guitar out there consistently, which is the hardest bit, I think, consistency with guitars. And PRS absolutely have the consistency that you're going to get a guitar that's going to stay in tune, play well across the whole neck. You, you know, you're not going to get dead spots, which, you know, is very common. You can have great sounding pickups in there and the guitar is going to ring acoustically as well. Well, yeah, and the rules are 21 rules, and if you follow them all, you got yourself a magic guitar. As you break each rule, you lose it. Okay. That's how it works. It, uh, some, obviously, I guess, more drastic than others as well. So if you... Mm, I don't know. Put rubber nut on it, the guitar's not going to sound very good. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so this is the, the 509. Can you tell us how the switching works on it? So you've got well, the... there's five pickups and nine tones, right? So this is fairly simple. Standard five-way switch. Yeah, this one, and then these two, and then this one, and then these two, and then this one. But these switches make this one a single coil, and this one a single coil. So if you were to get rid of this coil and this coil, you'd have three single coils on the guitar. So all those tones are available to you. So you've got loads of options built into one guitar. Just mm -hmm. flick a switch or two, and, you, and you're there. And they're thicker than most single coils. Um, you know, very often... It's almost an art to play um, really trebly single coils, and people get used to playing differently. It, it demands you play different, and these single coils are in between humbuckers and and single coils, so you don't really need to relearn how you play. That was the whole idea. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they sound incredible. You've got loads of tones on board. It's a bit of a no-brainer for, for a lot of people. That would be they're nice, but... <laughs> The guitar, how long have you had this? It's been here a little bit, right? No, this turned up, um, we've, we, we can't keep them in stock at the moment, really, PRS. Well, tell which, me that, you're making me smile, that's good. <laughs> no, we, we, they, we've had a, a lot of demand for them. I, you know, I've been saying that you're building absolutely incredible guitars at the moment. The, the standard is so consistently high that, that, that people are catching on to it and they, they want a PRS. All right, so... I actually have a way of thinking about this. Imagine for a minute, there's a line between me and you. I'm the worst guitar ever made, and you're the best guitar oh, ever made, okay? <laughs> Somewhere around here, it goes guitar, 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 guitar. 
It becomes a musical instrument. It becomes a, something that you could make your living on, that you could play records on. And yeah. our range is pretty narrow. I mean, if you buy one of these off the web or you or you buy this one, they're pretty close in tone. But my job is to keep moving the line up and up and up. So you, you have, say, a pocket of, of quality, I guess, yeah. that, that you but set it's very as high as possible. Us, it's good, yeah. And consistent, and then you just try and slide that up the scale as yeah, much as possible. So some other brands, you could buy... 10 of them you get 10 of them and there's a big range between you know a beautiful musical instrument and something that's not going to do its job our range is much narrower and I'm, we're always pushing it up so you know when i came in here i picked up that custom 24 and that uh wrap around green burst fade and i thought the guitar sounded beautiful playing through the pedals you know by the way <laughs> This is the first time I've been in a store since we released the pedals. Wow. So, yeah, we, we, are, we are very honored to have you as well. It's yeah. been, you know, it's great. It's the first time I've tried the pedals out. We're going to, uh, Tom's going to, uh, you know, show us some of the pedals on here as well. Um, they sound incredible. That's nice. We, we've been, you know, really, really stunned by these. And, and you're getting really good feedback on them from, from industry leaders as well. You never know how that's going to go. <laughs> I mean, we called one of them horse meat, and that's, I, you know, it, it's been, it's not a lambasting, it's mostly positive, but, you know, the <laughs> courage of to call it that. But the pedals, you can name almost anything you want. I can't call a guitar horse meat. That isn't going to no, work, no, right? No. <laughs> or, oh, I, this is not wind through the trees. This is not Mary Cries, right? But pedals, they're more fun. You can have more fun with them. Um, my problem with pedals is that people buy them and they have, 50 pedals, but only six of them make the pedal board. Yeah. I want pedals that make the pedal board and stay on the pedal board. That was the insistence. I said, if we're going to do it, I don't want just any pedal. I want something that's going to make the pedal board and stay on it. Yeah. And um, somebody gave us feedback today. They thought that turning Mary Cries on just made it sound. It was just a sound better pedal. It wasn't really a compressor, which was, you know, that's kind of the intention. Yeah, you step on it and somehow it sounds better. I mean, people are using guitars as synthesizer controllers. The pedal board is actually synthesizing a new sound, you know. Yeah, it's it's incredible, actually. When you look at some players' pedal boards, they have, you know, you, you have such extremes from the guy that turns up with two pedals, they just run them off batteries for yeah. them. You know, it's not, not cost-effective to buy a power supply. And then you have, you know, the guys that have pedal boards bigger than their guitar case. Yeah, well, I've seen people carry the guitar and not care about it and carry the pedal board like it was God itself. So the <laughs> pedal board was their guitar. I don't use a pedal. I, I keep a tuner pedal on my amp. I unplug out of the amp, plug into the tuner pedal, tune up and plug back in because I don't want anything in my signal path. Straight into the um, amp. But that's old school, you know, and that's the way I learned. Um, I like pedals because when you're in the studio, sometimes it's the only thing that will modify the tone and get it out of the way of the vocal and still have it be beautiful on the outside so the vocal and the bass and the bass drum can be in the middle. So, um, I don't know. I, I like it. I, I found, and over the years, I've found beautiful pedals here in England <laughs> that I've bought. And and you, as you know, I searched the shop when I got here <laughs> you to did. find out what you had. Um, I found uh, things that changed the way I thought about pedals in this country. I mean, it, there's a <laughs> England likes its pedals. Yes, we we do. We've, uh, you know, the the range of pedals that are available now is uh, I couldn't even put a number on how many pedals are available yeah. in, in the world. But yeah, we we do really love our pedals. And the problem I find with pedals is that. They're so easy to change out because, you know, you're buying a guitar, you know, you're going to it's two, three thousand pounds on a guitar. You're not going to do that as regularly. A pedal for two, three hundred pounds. It's easy just to buy another one, swap it out. Yeah. And you know, your pedal board changes so drastically that way. Yeah. You know, even swapping like for like, you know, you get you. I think your hearing must change over time. And that pedal you've loved for a long well, time. Well, also, they act different with each other. Yes. Um, look. The whole goal here was that these were usable pieces of professional audio gear that you would use, you know. Um, and so far, it's going well. I, I didn't know how everybody was going to react, but, you know, we as a team decided we would have them have the same general kind of look. Um, we would have them be um, 
direct through when you when you turn them off, you know, um, they wouldn't be buffered. Uh, there was lots of things about them that we all insisted. And so far, so good. Um, the results do speak for themselves as well. So I, are, I you, are you going to do a video, show people how these things work at some point? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah we, we're going to... Uh, yeah, we're going to do a few new. demos I've, on these. And you saw earlier today, I was learning how to use my own paddle. You know? <laughs> I was I was playing early before we started filming, uh, just through the, the incredible sounding Custom 24, just into our Cornell amp, and and Paul was was kind of explaining how the pedal works and and kind of tinkering with it. And it's hard to get a bad sound out of these. You were letting me play through the green guitar earlier, and we set the pedal up. Maybe we should show everybody what I was showing you. Yeah, let's let's do it. All right. So, so we've got uh, straight into the amp here. We're going going into our little house Cornell that's just sat behind me. Bass pickup. I mean that guitar sounds great straight away. So turn one through the trees on, please. Turn the dry wet down a little bit, make it a little teeny bit drier, okay? Turn it back off. with this thing it's just good fun right yeah so i turn the speed down a little bit on both of them a little more subtle so you've got two flangers fighting each other it's like two leslie's in the room going nuts you know yeah. so flanging is in a fairly short millisecond range sound travels through the air at about uh, one millisecond a foot, 1.1 milliseconds a foot. So if in a Leslie, it's about three and a half milliseconds. It's a flanger. But people think of them as chorus devices, which are more like 30 milliseconds. Massive and, difference. Yeah, yeah, massive difference. And in on a flanger, they turn this regeneration knob up, which is the sound of a flanger. But if you turn the regeneration knob off, it's very, very... So musical. I mean, you could use it on almost anything. You could use it on jazz, you could use it on country, you could use it on rock, you could use it a lot of piles places. We're just learning how to use this thing. And then today, for the first time, I turned Mary Cries on at the same time, which is the compressor. Should turn horse meat on at the same time. Oh, yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. <laughs> I never did that. I got <laughs> all right. three of them. There's another video on the web where he turns on all three and he's got the high end cranked up to a Marshall and it just sounds wicked. Yeah, I bet. It's, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I'd never done that before. Uh, that sounds super impressive. It's a nice thick sound, but there's still the clarity there yeah. as well. No, well, that's the whole idea. Well, I no, like thanks. this guitar. So, yeah, it's a ten top. You were asking me something off off camera about it being a ten top. What, what was? Yeah. That? So, when it comes to ten tops, we're always told buy a ten top if you can afford it. You know, because they they're just better tops, but. What makes it a 10 top as opposed to just a standard well, one? Originally, it was on a scale of 1 to 10. It was a 10. Look how deep the curl is here. It's just yeah. beautiful, right? And then the um, the definition became clearly defined curl over the entire top. But the truth is, if it's on 7 eighths of the top and it's ridiculous, it's, you know, there's a little bit of room to futz with it. Um, I didn't know people said buy a 10 top if you can afford it. That's new information <laughs> for me. Um, 
Yeah, we we the had last ball that you showed me was a zero top. It didn't have any curl <laughs> at all. But that's iconic in our in our business. That's okay. But you know, buying curly maple and getting it and um, and being able to find beautiful wood and stain it right is part of the art of making instruments. People have asked for a long time, does it make any difference in the tone? I don't think it makes any difference. I think curly wood of uh, uh, of the same species, the same dryness, the same kiln drying sounds the same. It's interesting, quilt quilt logs for quilted maple yeah. are curly on one side of the log and plain on the other. And I just really? don't think it makes any difference to use one side of the log <laughs> or the other. Yeah, that's it's something that you hear more from acoustic guitar manufacturers, you know, um, uh, you know, Bourgeois, someone like that, uh, Dana Bourgeois, he will, he says that he keeps all the, the ugly pieces of wood for his own guitars. And, and he builds his own guitars with all the ugly bits uh, because he says no one's going to want to buy them anyway, but they sound so good. <laughs> yeah, well, I it. like using the reject wood too. I actually agree with Dana. Something that somebody else thinks is unusable and I was like, that's going to make a magic guitar. At one point, I wanted to do a line of guitars called Magic Trash. Take all the wood that nobody, <laughs> exactly what Dana's talking about, all the wood that everybody would, you know, wave off and make magic guitars out of it. They're going to sound great. Yeah. <laughs> It's going to be a limited edition run, I reckon. Nah, I don't think so. <laughs> well, it, 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 you know, it's, we have a lot of ideas that don't make the market, and then we have a lot of ideas that do make the market. That Custom 24 made the market. The Pulse guitar made the market. The, the 509 made the market. The 594 made the market. There's an S2 sitting there, right? Yeah, we've got, we've got a great-looking S2 at the back. Yeah. Actually, before we talk about this guitar, I want to just check out the S2. Well, you've not picked it up before. I, I will have done, but you know, we, we we set all the guitars up when they turn up and you know, you get, you know, like like well, I guess the guys in the factory, you know, you, you only have so much time you can actually sit and enjoy and listen to the guitars, play the notes, but these are an incredible guitar, especially for the price point. I mean, you, you know. That was the whole idea. How? I mean, it's about two fifths of money made by the same people. And this is just separate factory from, no, from the factory? No, this, this, this is made in the Maryland factory where the green guitar was made. I see. Same as same assembly line, same people. And it's just just no frills in some ways. You know, you just yeah. cut back on some some of the decoration, like you know, crazy ten top, let's say things like that. Well, we also changed the way we made the necks. So we didn't use a piece of mahogany that's this big. The 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 headstock is glued on. It's scarfed on, but you can't. It's the joint is so good you can't even see it. Jeez. Um, nobody even <laughs> that, is, that is hidden. Yeah, but well, it's not hidden because we tried to hide. It's hidden because we did such a good glue joint, right? But that would cost us less to do without sacrificing any of the quality. Um, the way we fret them is a little bit different. The way we set them up is a little different. But in the end, it's got to work. The guitar's got to be controllable. It's got to plug in and sound good. That guitar should sound good plugged in. Here. Yeah. It's yeah, the same exact setting. You plug it in. I don't know if it's in tune or not. Let's see. Check. Shop rules say that it won't be. Let's try it. Well, that's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> Good sounding guitar. Yeah, that sounds great straight away. It's 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 very pleasant to sit with as well. The contours, yeah. everything. You know, it's 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 got something for everyone. This guitar. Well, I'm pleased that you like it. I mean, look, if we've done our job, you should be able to take a guitar out of the shop and do a studio session or a gig with no adjustment. That's that would be the idea, right? And so far, that that would do both those jobs. That would that makes me feel good. To something that um, that John Mayer touched on actually, and in, in in the release of the uh, the SC Silver Skies, it's just how well the the guitars intonate the whole way up the neck. You know, it's just incredible. Is there any particular magic to doing that? Yes, you have to put the frets in the right place and the <laughs> yeah. nut in the right place and the bridge in the right place <laughs> and the saddles in the right place. Otherwise, it will not. Yes. Um, not so easy to do. The frets are calculated on something called the 12th root of 2, which is 1.0594631. And the reason I know that number <laughs> is when I was calculating frets in the early days, they didn't have memories and calculators, and I had to put the number in over and over and over again. For each fret? 
Every okay. time you recalculated the next spread, I had to put 1.0594631 in and divide by that <laughs> and, and multiply or whatever I was doing. And I know the number because my calculator didn't have a memory. I wow. couldn't just go, but, you know, memory, memory, memory. It wasn't, <laughs> it was early on. <laughs> Look, it was interesting. We didn't have Luthier's Mercantile. We didn't have Stumac. We didn't have all these websites where you could buy guitar parts. That's not the way it worked. You know, so when I see that and I say to the guitar maker, how did you calculate the fret size? So I bought a fretboard from one of these companies that was slotted correctly. I'm like, okay, fine. But <laughs> I don't know exactly how that was done. But on that one, we know exactly how it was done. Yeah. And so, um, I guess now with, with CNC machines, things like that, you can do that. You haven't got to have someone. Once you calculate them right, you can go and drop in a bit and. Do the, exactly the same over and over again. The thing I like about CNC machines is once they're programmed right, oh my God, they'll cut that thing exactly right 10,000 times. Yeah, which is which is impressive. I have been to the factory and seen the CNC machines working. And But what's incredible, so you, you do have CNC machines that do do a lot of the work, but there's so much hands-on work that goes no, with so these the, guitars as well. So the factory's half machinery and half people. It's a It's a human machine really and you know it's not it's complicated yeah. and uh i take real pride uh in how this is turning out you're holding it and it's doing its job for me that's so important that it's doing its job that you're picking it up and you can plug into this thing and even though the wind through the trees is throwing things in and out of tune on, <laughs> on um, uh, you know, things that are going back and forth, LFOs, it's still, it has to be in tune to start. It'll sound triple bad. 